I wanted to make a film that was all about body language, and I wanted it to be a cross between a ballet and a rugby scrum. And I think it sort of happened. Um, to do very physical action in stop motion is complicated and does slow you down. And the schedule was 10, uh, well, it was about 12 seconds a day, which was quite hard work. Um, and doing the physical stuff. Well, when you're storyboarding, you have to find a, a nice balance between wide shots, which take forever to shoot, and close-ups that take uh, less time to shoot. Um, so you must bear that in mind when you're, you're storyboarding. But I did a lot of research into looking at uh, swimming. I wanted to see the reflection of the character underwater. And I was told, no, it, it, physically, you can't have a reflection underwater. And I thought, well, I go swimming every day, and I see myself underwater, and I won this one. Um, I'm not a great artist. I can't draw terribly well. Um, but how I work with the model makers, McKinnon Saunders over in Manchester, I like to get a scrapbook of shapes and, and, and show them what I want from the puppet. Um, and I leave them to sculpt it, but with me guiding. So I, I make scrapbooks like this of, of watery shapes and what I was wanting from the figures. This was actually the photograph that started Plume. Um, this was me much younger <laughs> in 1995 over in LA when I was working on Mars Attacks. And this was my swimming pool I had in LA. How I love saying that. Um, and you can tell it's a long time ago. Um, but I saw that photo and I thought, am I flying or am I swimming? It could be both. And it's you know, very appropriate for Bradford because this is a David, you know, could be a David Hockney photo and David Hockney's connections with the city. Um, but I thought flying, swimming, I quite, there's a germ of a story here. And, and I thought, how do I get from flying to swimming? And, you know, the wings and ripping the wings off seemed a good trauma. Um, it's quite a brave film for me because I usually um, pack pack my films full of cultural references and all sorts of obscure levels. And this is simply a man with wings. Everybody's wanting to say, is it an angel? Is it Icarus? And I'm saying, no, it's a man with wings. And I was determined there was going to be no set, no costume. Um, it was just a man with wings, and he loses his wings. Um, when I, when I teach, and I do a lot of teaching, I waffle on constantly about structure and character arcs and the three-act structure, and, and then I go home and think, darn, my own films have none of that. Um, and I thought, but what I'm really pleased about Plume is it has the perfect three-act structure, students. Um, if you want to write a good film, set up stasis where the character is in his element and his character, you know, what he wants, he wants to fly. That's what drives him. Uh, that's act one. Act two, complicate it, which is an understatement in this point where he meets the shadowy characters and is raped, for want of a better word, and loses his, uh, his wings, but he still wants to fly. And act three is the resolution where he he completes his journey, he reaches his goal, which is flying, but it's different, it's flying underwater. And I'm very pleased with the structure, I'm very pleased, I, I tend to work out things in such detail. Um, there is no set, uh, and I thought it would be very easy to confuse the audience uh, where we were, whether we were looking up, or looking down, whatever. So I made sure there were always feathers on the floor so we could see the floor. But to help the geography, and it's really helpful, uh, students, when you're staging a film, work out the journey of the character. Cliff is always, always on the right of frame. He's always travelling to the left. And the audience, you know, they don't have any set to uh, help them but Cliff is always on the right, traveling to the left. I suddenly had a panic after making this film, thinking, actually, naturally, it's, it's you travel from left to right. But then I thought some countries maybe read other ways, so I, I didn't change it. But he is always traveling one way, and the shadows are always traveling, and then they meet in the moment. Um, 
and there's a nice symmetry of him, a white figure falling from the black one way, and then a dark figure falling against white at the end. And I love, you know, I would say to students, use structure, use colors. There's only a glimpse of red in that film. Um, don't be frightened of, of enjoying, enjoying those elements that tell a story. Um, composition, sound, music. There's some good sound effects in that of breaking celery. It was good.